Here's the seventh gen iPod Touch with a 256 gigabyte capacity. This is the highest one. It sells for about $400. This is really small and light. Nice. And what else does it come with? Charging cable and ear pods, the wired ones. Before I take this out, I got a couple accessories. I got a glass cover to cover up the panel. And I got a little case for it. I'll put these on right now. I don't like that it's a mirror. I thought that this was supposed to be to tempered glass, but it's not matte. Dang it, this isn't the matte version. Great, I'm going to charge this up and install all the apps and come back to the video. If you have an iPhone, why would you wanna get an iPod Touch? Seems unnecessary. But for my use, I'm, I guess I'm in the minority, or maybe I'm in the minority, of using iPods. This is the last iPod classic that Apple released before they discontinued it. This was the highest capacity, which was 160 gigabytes. And I've had this since it was released and I use it every time I'm in my car because this is for my car and anytime where I'm exercising, uh, I cycle a little bit or, or and I also rollerblade, product of the 90s, and when I do that, I don't like to keep everything on my phone. I don't mind having this extra device to listen to my music, primarily music. No video, just music, podcasts, audiobooks. Love, I love audiobooks. And the iPod Classic was the highest capacity that Apple offered in an iPod up until the new iPod Touch was released. Before the iPod Classic, I was using the iPod Nano. This Nano is the fifth gen. The fifth generation was the one iPod Nano that incorporated a camera. It's a very crappy camera. Not a good camera at all by today's standards. But this was the only one that had a camera. And I thought it was pretty awesome to have a, a video camera this small. And it didn't even, no one knew it was a camera, not that I use it to spy on people or for mischievous reasons, but I just like having a, uh, I like cameras, as you can see from my channel, and ha having a camera this small was just awesome, and I still have it. I don't think I'm going to sell it. I just like having this for the the nostalgia factor, but this was only 16 gigabytes, and they never made it bigger than 16 gigabytes. Uh, so I can't really pack all my music that I want in this. So I got the iPod Touch 7th Gen. And the reason why I upgraded was because of the capacity that's finally 256 gigabytes, which is the one I got. And also the Bluetooth and wireless features. The Classic does not have Bluetooth and does not have wireless at all. You have to do everything through the connection. And it seems like Apple's getting rid of iTunes and is getting rid of the the old school connection. And it was also a, a trouble with, with the newer modern cars. Uh, a lot of the modern vehicles is you plug in your iPod or your phone and it connects. If it's not with Bluetooth, you can connect it into its USB port. A lot of modern cars, I think all modern cars have USB port. You connect it to your USB port and then you can control your device, your phone, through the uh, uh, interface of your car. With this, it was, it was very clunky because it's an old piece of older piece of technology. I can either connect the iPod Touch via Bluetooth or I can connect it with the lightning port into my vehicle's USB media center. Not all vehicles have this, but mine does. And it's great to just connect it here, 
listen to all my podcasts, listen to my music, control everything with my vehicle's media interface. And then if I'm going cycling, for example, and I'm driving to a cycling destination, I'm, I'm in my car listening to an audiobook. I park, unplug this, pop it into my Bluetooth headphones, which I got right here. These are the Sound Peats. These are very affordable. These were $35, got it on Amazon. I do. I have another uh, unboxing video that I'll put in the description of this video. But have this, bust it out, do my cycling, come back in my car, plug it in, pick up where I left off. It's just a nonstop stream of my music and my audiobooks and my podcasts. So I'll never get bored because we're in a generation where you need to have constant stimulation and this allows me to, uh, this perpetuates that <laughs> in a good and bad way. So I really like the iPod Touch strictly for the audio consumption. It does have video. I am able to watch video on it, but I don't use it for that. The, the screen is not that great. However, having said that, it is nice to, now that I have an iPhone 10 with, with the much bigger screen, it is nice to have a smaller screen. I know people complain about this because they're used to the bigger screens, but I like having a screen quite small that I can hold in my hand and it's not, I don't need two hands to hold it. And I can, and it's lightweight. And although this was $400, I don't mind it when I use it every single day. When you use something every single day, the value changes. Now, if I were to have only used this sporadically throughout the year, 400 is out of the, is, is ridiculous. It's not a good investment. But when you use something every single day, $400, not that big of a deal to me. The iPod Touch still has the audio connection, the 3.5 audio connection. I don't know what other device maintains that audio connection that Apple's making from now on, but Still got that, and that is very useful uh, just for the compatibility of all your other non-Apple stuff.